Hi everybody and welcome to this video on polygraph tests as part of the forensic psychology course for stage 1 psychology. So let's get started. So a polygraph test measures physiological responses of the person being examined. So this includes the heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate and galvanic skin response which is sweating. So it measures a lot of physiological responses all at the same time. Now although the polygraph is often called a lie detector test, it doesn't act Actually measure lies. There's not enough correlation between someone's physiological responses and if they're telling the truth or not. It does monitor, again, physiological indicators of arousal, which is stress, but there's not enough evidence to suggest that someone's physiological measures going up or spiking means that they're lying necessarily. So in class, we've obviously talked about the validity and reliability of polygraph tests. I'll cover it in this video as well. But in Australia, it's not actually seen to be a lie detector measure in terms of validity, but it does, however, measure physiological responses. So it definitely has its place in psychology, but to conclude that it detects lies, it's not scientifically valid enough. So as we can see, we've got two images here. This bottom one here is the more up-to-date, more modern style version of a polygraph test. You can see the blood pressure cuff, the breathing uh, measures that are around the gentleman's uh, middle here, the electrodes on the end of the fingers to measure galvanic skin response, and of course heart rate is measured as well. This top one is the more old-fashioned style of polygraph test, which measures again the different physiological responses but on paper. It's usually done uh, via laptop these days. Okay, so let's go through how polygraphs actually work. So a polygraph test compares a person's physiological activity while in a relaxed state with their physiological activity when asked an emotionally charged question. So the questions are really important to consider. First, there are control questions that are asked. So control questions are used to establish a baseline physiological response, which can be used for comparison purposes. So control questions are routine and non-emotional, such as what is your name, what's the date today, um, things like that. So things that are very obvious in their answer. So the reason why control questions are asked is to get baseline data and to obviously compare that to the relevant questions, which are more emotionally charged. And the assumption is, is that if the physiological responses go higher on the relevant questions in comparison to the control questions, that someone may be lying. So speaking of relevant questions, those are uh, relevant questions are those to which relate to an investigation or an issue. So during the test, relevant questions are mixed with control questions. The control questions are, again, usually strung together as though they are a part of small talk. So again, what's your name, what's the day today, etc. And then relevant questions are unexpectedly presented to the person being tested. So again, if physiological responses are weaker on the control questions, it's inferred that the person is lying. That's the whole premise of people calling this a lie detector test. Now, the problem with this test is, is that it's not an accepted uh, form of evidence. It's not accepted as legitimate in terms of lie detection. There's several reasons for this. So one of the limitations is that guilt and anxiety show very similar physiological responses. So it may not be that a person is lying necessarily, they may just be very nervous, and the wording of the questions themselves may be enough to trigger anxiety rather than be them being guilty of anything. It could also be the suddenness of the relevant questions after being asked a control question. Often the wording of relevant questions are very confronting, such as, did you murder this person or did you rape this person? That's going to cause an, an immediate spike, not because the person is guilty necessarily, but it will cause them stress and anxiety. So it may read that they're lying when they're in fact just nervous. Another limitation of a polygraph test is that a dishonest person may be able to beat a polygraph test if they can control their responses. So it's also very easy to beat a polygraph test using countermeasures. So countermeasures are certain things or behaviours that a person can do to either keep their physiological arousal low, so deep breathing or tensing up muscles and things like that to make sure that the physiological differences between the control questions and the relevant questions are similar as possible. So then it would, um, well, the results would show that they were being truthful because there wasn't a huge difference, but it may be that they're able to beat the polygraph test and they may pass the lie detector test when in fact they are guilty. So it's also very easy to beat a polygraph. 
So in general, it's accepted in Australia that polygraph tests have very low validity, which as we know is very low accuracy. So criminals have been able to beat the polygraph machine before by purposefully creating highly emotional responses again to the control question. So this means that their polygraph reading just shows their normal level of arousal is higher than usual. So it's actually extremely easy to beat one, but it's also very easy to wrongly convict someone if their physiological levels go up in the relevant questions. It doesn't mean they're lying, it just means they may be nervous. And there may be other factors going on as well. It could be, again, different substances in the body, a naturally higher resting heart rate, and a lot of other extraneous variables as well. So that is polygraph tests, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this video useful for revision. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.